All right, we back today, y'all. This is another big hearted caregiver summit. We here with a nice young lady. I, I'm, I'm gonna give y'all opportunity to hear her story. She has an amazing story. I just tell you our little backstory, how we met. Um, she's a really good person, and and uh, she works at a dialysis center. She takes very good care of people who who get uh, dialysis treatment, and she'll tell you like her backstory on that. But I met her like some years ago. It had to be over ten years ago. My mom was um, getting dialysis. Her kidneys had failed and uh, she ended up unfortunately in a dialysis center like most people do with failing kidneys and it was a really nice lady who took care of her uh, for her whole stint there and then my father some years later had turned around and he's actually on dialysis and I ran into her again later on down the line in life such a nice lady taking care of many 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 people in dialysis uh, hospitals you know she she's i'm gonna let her give you her story big hearted caregiver uh let me introduce you to nurse april how you doing today oh how are you? tell people a little bit about yourself before we get into it well um, i guess my backstory you know i can honestly say uh nursing is actually my second career um initially when i first graduated from high school i went to school for accounting and i did a lot of retail work and i did retail management and wow. okay. stuff like that and then um I want to say it was like in 99, I think it was, when my father's kidneys failed. And then um, he had went to a center someplace in Wilmington and he absolutely hated it. And he mm -hmm. was like, he wanted to do dialysis at home. Mm -hmm. So I actually went and learned dialysis because I was like, I'm going to take care of my dad. We'll do hemodialysis at home. So I, I learned it. I can do it. Um, he ended up getting a transplant. But now I have mm -hmm. this skill, so I went in to work as a patient care technician. Okay. The company I worked for had a tuition reimbursement program. They pay 100% for your first nursing degree. Oh, wow. So I loved the job that I did, but I didn't like the money because they don't pay well for a PCT. So what I ended up doing was um, going back to school on the company's tuition reimbursement program to get an RM degree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then from there, I was a staff nurse for a while. Then I went from being a staff nurse to a charge nurse and then to a clinic manager. Wow. Wow. A very extensive career. Um, while you was building this lovely nursing career that you got right now, tell me some external struggles that you may have had to overcome to get to be the person that you are today. Um, <laughs> external struggles. Yeah. yeah. So the biggest thing was I was a single mom. Okay. And... Um, actually, when I decided to go back to nursing school, I had a four-month-old and a four-year-old. Wow. So, that was... You was right in the middle of some things. Like yes, you're saying. yes. Yes. And, um, <laughs> I, yeah, and my father, you know, he started to get sick. And so, we were taking care of him as well. He had some cardiac issues outside of the transplant that they really couldn't do anything about. Um, because at the time when they found the issues, it was kind of too far going. Mm -hmm. So, um... That was part of it. And then just trying to figure out scheduling and trying to make do to be able to still work and to go to school and to be mom. Was that was that hard? Because there's a lot of young ladies I'm noticing that's that's trying to put give themselves a living doing this caregiving thing while they're actually, you know, living their real life. It is hard. It is very hard. And to this day, I still try to think back like how I don't know how I did it. And I noticed a lot of it is a big blur to me because I don't remember. I'm like, I was kind of pretty much running on no sleep. But it was that determination, that push. Like, I got to do it. I got to do it. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, I want, you know, I was the sole provider for my kids. Right. And I wanted to be able to give them a life, you know, as if they had two parents with income or something like that like I don't feel like my kids should have suffered and I think it was really my determination and my love for my kids and wanting to be able to provide for them and not be caught up in a system where you know I'm dependent on handouts or something mm. like that or mm. on other right. people so it was like I and I, I must say I probably inherited it from my mother because she's very driven like that and then I had the support of my family you know my mom my dad my grand my grandmother um I have four brothers too and everybody's like okay if this is what you're going to do then will you we we're going to support you in doing this but the biggest thing was just so that I could stand on my own two feet because wow. I was a single mom mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wow what kind of uh internal struggles did you have 
internal struggles mostly is po like the politics and the whole situation you know when you were in nursing school you of course you have your students that you're working with and then as far as you know being the single mom and working also while trying to go to school is like finding that time to study and then one thing I will say, the instructors were pretty good, but it's like you had, there were certain things you had to be able to do. And I will say, in doing so, I commend my, the students I was in clinical with, like my clinical group, they were absolutely amazing. They helped you out? They did. Like, they found out when I was failing a class. And my clinical group grabbed me and they like, look, you're not going home tonight. We're going to go down here to Borders Books. So we were at Christiana. Oh, wow. And we went down to Borders. And I mean, those girls sat there and they drilled into my head just by talking through and talking through the stuff that I needed to know for the next test coming up. Wow, that was cool. Mm -hmm. That was cool. Uh, which I guess was, would lead me to my next question. What was your biggest wall or your biggest hurdle that you had to uh, accomplish to get to be where you're at today? The biggest hurdle I had to accomplish was to get out of my own way, honestly. Um, to not fall into that mindset like, oh man, here I am, I'm stuck, I got these kids, I'm not going to be able to do. Like, I had to really make myself believe and I had to force myself to pursue by saying, April, you can do it, you can do it, you can do whatever you put your mind to it. Like, to not let the negativity play into me not pursuing the dream that I had. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Got to keep your mind focused. on the outside, people will say, girl, you're not going to be able to do that. Mm. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, that's too much, you know. But to be, and then I can say, you know what? Yes, I can. Or even to be concerned, because I honestly, at the time, I was going through a lot of stuff with their dad. But to not be concerned about what he's doing or the issues, that, you know, that were playing into whatever was going on with him. Because I can, and I honestly tell you, um, there was a time where, you know, his mother had said something to me. He was, like, just doing stuff. And finally, I said to myself, you know what? I'm not dealing with these people. I'm not dealing with none of this drama. And I actually put drama on hold. I told everybody in my life, if they were you coming at me with drama, don't talk to me until May 2000. <laughs> right. Was that graduation? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. I was like, right. at that time, I'll entertain whatever it is y'all want me to entertain. But right now, I'm not entertaining anything. Right, you was peak and focused. I'm focused. going to the top, and, yes. I'm, and, I'm, and that's that's all it is. <laughs> what was your big epiphany that led you to say, that "I'm not going, I'm not going to let y'all people into my head"? I'm going, you know, what was the big epiphany? That Believe it or not, I was one of my nursing instructors. Wow. One of my nursing instructors pulled me to the side. I was doing clinical at the VA hospital. She pulled me to the side. And she said, "I don't know what's going on in your life, but you need to fix it." And she says, "You have the potential to be a really good nurse, but you need to fix whatever is going on so you can focus." That was serious. That was serious. After she told you that, what plan did you come up with to make it happen? I said, I'm going to fix it. I'm <laughs> going. I'm not going to deal with it. And so I just decided I'm not dealing with it. And I just ignored all outside influences. What um, <clears throat> what conflicts did you experience along the way trying to, um, you know, s stay away from that and just stay on your path? Oh, people would try you. You know, they say little things, make you get a phone call here, a phone call there. You know, little things, but uh, hello, no, no, I don't want to deal with it. Bye. <laughs> That's how you handle it. Mm -hmm. That's how you handle it. <laughs> what was the end result? The end result was uh, I graduated and I got my nursing degree. <laughs> 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 That's a hard program. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. We congratulate you because you're doing an excellent job taking care of people. Um. What what was the uh, transformation that you experienced that uh, that that you could say one hundred percent got you to where you're at today? Um, I don't know if I would say it's a transformation. I think a lot of how I got to where I am today is because of my extent the extensive experience I have in customer service. Because when I look at it at the end of the day, it's like my dad, you know, he's like, I, I hate it. They don't know how to talk to people. They treat us any kind of way. So then I'm thinking, okay, I have this huge customer service background mm -hmm. and then apply that in healthcare you make people happy and that's what it's all about right and at, the end, and at the end of the day if i can get these people to smile and just be okay you know sitting in that chair for four hours i'm happy that's awesome <laughs> i got one last question for you tell us what you feel is the importance of being a caregiver because you've been doing it for such a long time what drives you actually the people i care for drive me i love to make 
I love to make them feel good. I love to see them smile. I like to make them laugh. And is it always that way? No. But I feel like also laughter is therapeutic. And so, which is probably why I'm so goofy in there. Because some of the stuff is like, I feel, I do, I feel like, you know, to make people feel good about being in a, a situation that is otherwise not so good. Because end stage right. renal disease is kind of like, it is what it is. It's it an end stage, you end know. Stage, right. There's no other option other than transplant or death. And so it's like, you know, at least have, let people feel good while they're here. Yeah. Absolutely. If you had something to tell the uh, the younger folk coming up in the same, you know, nursing path and they want to, you know, go out and use their heart and take care of people, what would you tell them? Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. They <laughs> might, you might have to, because honestly, I will say initially when I first started, I did it one class at a time. You hear now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't give up if you only got to take if you have to take one class at a time then do so until you get to a point where you can take maybe two beautiful it's a very rewarding job it's a very rewarding job um, and I know some people are like oh well nurses are so thank they're not thank they're like it's a thankless job it is it's just like being a parent too but at the end of the day what are you doing it for are you doing it because you're looking for recognition or are you doing it because you really just care about people? people? And me personally, I do it from the heart. I've been called all kinds of names. <laughs> <laughs> and I still, Even doing the right thing? Yeah, and yeah. I still smile and I, I love you too. <laughs> I love you too. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, I promised this young lady that I wouldn't hold her no longer than we had to. And um, she's blessed us today with a lot of courage and insight for us to go on and be the big hearted caregivers that we are. I want to thank you, Nurse April, for your time. All right, I have an award you. for you. Uh, we're going to give you to present you with the award in just about two more seconds. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, we just want to celebrate uh, big hearted caregivers. If you know anybody that's that, 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 you know, if you fell on hard times, you will want to take care of you. <laughs> Nominate them. Call me, 302-689-3240. I'm Mr. KC with the Big Hearted Caregiver Summit. Nurse April, we'll see you later. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you.